Hello, okay. Top of the day to you, wherever you are, in this part of the globe. Uh, I feel very privileged to be making a modest presentation at uh, our ongoing neologism uh, conference, which started since last week. I am very happy that this is happening. Uh, you never can tell the development you have in your field. Um, when I was at the University of Ife for my first degree, even for my master's degree, um, you are not taught anything about uh, neologism or uh, translation. But I had to teach it at tertiary level at some point, which is to show that Things are not remaining static. Things continue to grow uh, in leaps and bounds for that matter. Right. Okay. So the issue I want to quickly discuss is on neologism in Yoruba language. As a matter of a preamble, um, I have pointed out that um, all languages all over the world, they perform the same function and they all have abil ability to grow. Uh, they have their similarities and differences because there are two uh, different languages that behave in exactly the same way. And uh, that is why care must be taken not to apply the same rules to a particular language uh, to the study of another language. In um, Yoruba studies then we used to say that Kama Fiagbada that is applying the rules of a particular uh, language for the purpose of another. They have their uh, similarities, but their differences are still there. That is why we need to study them into details. All living languages, they have the ability to grow. Uh, and this will come in uh, through introduction of new words, new terms, coinages, changes in the notion, accommodation of loan words. Uh, all these are dynamic nature of uh, languages. In other words, when a language is not put to good use, there is a possibility that the language will go extinct or dead. Latin is a common uh, place example given, there are so many others, there are over 500 languages that are either extinct or dead. Extinct because the number of people uh, speaking them uh, started to dwindle and dwindle and dwindle, not because they don't want to speak the language, but because uh, the population speaking them are no longer there. And so, um, new terms and language growth emerge through various uh, dimensions. For example, we have popular slangs. There are, there are some that emerged some years back. Some of them have faded away. Some had been retained over years. And the um, interaction of the speakers of a particular language with other language speakers in one form or the other too. Uh, for example, we can have this happening through religion, politics, trade, Colonial experience, proximal coexistence, um, are not something that is just happening. Even though the um, spate of globalization had uh, uh, made it to grow in leaps and bounds. Well, I have um, gone on to uh, share some relating new terms, and uh, this presentation is going to copiously adopt the principles articulated uh, by a foremost Yoruba scholar, Professor Ayoban Goshi, in his way, the period of 1984, articulated by the Yoruba Studies Association of Nigeria, Egbe Onimo Yoruba. The princip principles with our own adaptation is what I will uh, shortly discuss, uh, starting with some broader uh, guidelines as contained in that uh, document as well. 
the first guideline is that you first look for a term that already exists in the language and possibly which the speakers are already familiar with, coined or otherwise, before resorting to loan words. Uh, that is, we have some words that are already in the language. They may not be particularly used for that purpose, or they may be so used. Uh, we look at such words that exist in the language first. Then, when we are coining new words, the coinages must be terms that will be explicit, not mere translation. Uh, neologism is a little different from translation. Uh, because when you translate, sometimes you run the risk of doing some literal translation, which may not convey the true meaning of what you are translating. So I have given an example here uh, in uh, the Yoruba metal language, which we currently use. Homework is rendered as ishe ashetilewa, a uh, work that must be done from home, not literally translating homework which will probably look like ile uh, ishe, uh, which is not what we have in mind. And thirdly, the new terms must not, must not be unduly long to make them easy to use and remember. Uh, I have given an example, which I also quote from uh, the Yoruba Meta language. Eko afuyimo, eko afuyimo. That is cognitive learning as against which is a little longish. We have to uh, see how we shorten the terms so that they can be remembered. I am saying that we should note a number of things. From the foregoing, it will certainly be an equivalent task to limit the use of loan words in coining and adoption of new terms in the face of very rapid growth and use of technology as well as emergence of new words and concepts. The way things are going, we are rapidly having a lot of words coming up. And some of the concepts in the words are not existing in the cultural and linguistic background of Yoruba speakers. They are new concepts. So we have to see how we get around uh, these concepts so that we will not be left behind in the scheme of things uh, globally. For example, we have such words as email, website, emoji, and so on. They point to the fact that uh, new words and ideas uh, are getting introduced to uh, lexicon all over the world. Uh, and it is a forgotten matter that it will be difficult to coin words for ideas and concepts that are not available in the language or cultural society. That is, what you don't have, you don't give. It's going to be difficult for you to begin to give a, uh, a label to a concept that is foreign to the people. But of course, these concepts, as long as they are coming to the people and the people are making good use of them, in a matter of little while, uh, they will get used to it. And that is why we need to do something. We cannot say because uh, new words are coming up, I imagine, uh, therefore, we don't need to do what others are doing. Indeed, there is nothing wrong, even if we discover something in Yoruba land that is going to apply worldwide. Uh, why, why not uh, give that thing a new name? Accordingly, uh, at the same time, in order to be at par with developments occurring in the world of technology, languages need to rise up to the occasion. Otherwise, they may not be useful in catching up with the trends and developments which other languages may be enjoying. And accordingly, the utility value of a language will be defeated once the usage is curtailed or found to be incapable of broadening ideas. That is how languages actually die, when they are not capable of um, uh, delivering what they should deliver. Now, I will move on to um, some strategies for coining new terms in Yoruba language, uh, which may not be exhaustive anyway, but it will serve some purpose. Uh, for now. The first is uh, through composition and uh, likely by nominalization. Nominalization through single nouns or uh, noun noun constructions. This can evolve, uh, involve basic words in the language and or a morphological combination of basic words and nominalized words. And then uh, this can be through 
uh, affixes. The affixes, affixes that are commonly used in Yoruba language are prefixes and infixes. Uh, I give uh, example of some affix, uh, prefixes here that is um, uh, the ones before a word that we are joined to a word. R is the first one uh, to coin Ashigbe. Somebody lending credence or support to somebody, something. Ashigbe. Ashafihon. I want us to note um, that Yoruba is a uh, tonal language. The first R there is different from the next one, which is A, low tone uh, vowel A. As we have in A, Koto, uh, A, Yisodi, and Adakwe. Uh, we have the prefixes coming before uh, some other verbal constructions. A, Koto is A, Kotioto, A, Yisodi, A, T, A, Y, C, O, D, Adakwe. But like I said, we cannot begin to give such longish labels. That is why it is crucial for us to use these uh, prefixes so that the uh, translations or the compositions will be uh, with brevity. The next one is so which is personification using prefix e. There. Next slide, please. The next one is e as well as in iru. Isoduruko, which is nominalization, Ikmin Oro, which um, finally becomes Ikmin Oro, that, that is paragraph. Uh, the prefix E are the ones we use all through there. Iisodi, negation, Ibele uh, an assessment. Ikede, language acquisition, which um, is a uh, for me, a better rendition of Kikoidi. What we have uh, in the meta language is Kikoidi, but Ikede will be shorter for me. Kikoidi is not too long anyway. Now we need to observe one thing. The ones with uh, A and E, when they conjoin with uh, similar uh, uh, root words, it may connote one other thing which does not uh, exist originally in Yoruba language. E is used when you say, I mean, it's um, an abstract thing. E isodi, as opposed to a isodi. A isodi is the, the thing itself, the concrete noun, so to speak, as against e isodi, which is uh, uh, the abstract formation. Then we have a as in a particle, a as in a da, nature, a as in a b. And uh, this issue of uh, tonality, when we say a b as well, uh, a is different from a, 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 a b, is different from uh, a B, A B, the kind of um, uh, spiritual or whatever uh, material that can be used to fast track uh, going on long journeys. No. A B, that is A, mid tone, A, as opposed to A, which is low tone. So care must be taken about the tonality of the language, otherwise, you'll be saying something different from what you have in mind. That is the first uh, 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 part. Uh, then we have through composition again. Afumo um, ani, afumo ani exists in the language, but um, it, it is hardly used for uh, composition of of coining new words. We have afumo ani as in omo ki omo ki dia. You say an infix, you know, de, you know, uh, from generation to generation. De, there is an infix, uh, but uh, this is not very common in coining uh, new words as the previous one, with, uh, that is with prefixes. Uh, suffixes are hardly uh, 
notable in Yoruba language. So I won't be talking about them. So uh, still on construction, we have the now, now constructions that is having two different uh, uh, two different nouns or nominal words coming together to give a singular meaning. Imo unkon. Imo is a noun. Unkon is a noun as well. Uh, the meaning now is cognitive. Ami fagun. Uh, through the noun noun construction means circumflex. Oni adako solo. Solo song uh, rendered by a person. Aloha pamu, redo. We have these two uh, nouns uh, are telling us that we are talking about redos. Uh, we have others that uh, become nominalized. Uh, they may be verbs or some other classes of words, but they are not initially nouns. But by the time we compose them, they become nouns. Uh, like wafun, to depict something that is optional and kobegbemu, which is a, uh, an exception, exception. So we have those ones. Uh, all these uh, are examples of uh, uh, composition, that is making coinages from words existing in the language, either through prefixes or through noun-noun uh, construction. Then we have semantic extension. Semantic ex ex extension uh, are words that exist in the language, but we have borrowed them in quote to depict something else different from uh, the original meaning they have. As we have in Apola, Apola is usually used to describe chunk of um, wood, Apola again. But in this case, we use it to denote phrase in the language, uh, a phrase which is a chunk out of a, a sentence semantically. So we have a pola. The meaning of a pola is quite different in Yoruba language. But when it comes to linguistics or phonology or yeah, morphology, you talk about a pola. And the same thing, ka. Uh, which we use to def, uh, denote cavity. Ka is a part of the house in the past, um, like a, uh, in a veranda. So, but the mean, I mean, the word has now been borrowed to mean something else. So these are some of the ways by which <clears throat> uh, new words are brought to bear through the meta language or new logism. Ihun, Ihun is um, from, well, this one, you can see that uh, we have a prefix there, E plus Hun, uh, meaning structure. But the original meaning of Ihun is something that um, you have pieced together, like we have in Ihun Asho, um, the making of a cloth. Ate, chat. Uh, the meaning of arte is something that uh, traders or market women use in the market to display their wares so that everybody can see at a glance. But we, have, we now use arte uh, for the vowel chat, for instance, uh, the original meaning uh, notwithstanding. The same thing, a car. Uh, usually when you say a car, a car will mean a branch from a tree. But now, when you want to talk about Yoruba department, which is a branch of, you can say a kaide Yoruba. So a car now has a meaning that is different from the original meaning. And that is how the language grows. Uh, the last one that I have used here is my own coinage, which I, ha I had from some little kids at Ibadan. They were watching cartoon uh, on the television. And the elder one started calling the younger brother, come and see Legbe Legbe, come and see Legbe Legbe. Legbe Legbe actually means uh, tadpoles. And you know how tadpoles uh, move and behave inside water. 
So uh, to that, uh, to those young boys, uh, the cartoon, the way they behave, they know that they are not human. They rather refer to them as libi libi. And so uh, these are some of the ways by which uh, we can coin new terminologies by semantic uh, extension. Now we can uh, borrow from dialect. Uh, the one used, already used in the Yoruba metal language, which we currently use, is the word wune uh, to, I mean, uh, denote an item. And the word was taken from a bad dialect. Uh, the Abeokuta people, they call something little as one. So this had been uh, uh, made good use of by the scholars, and that is what we use up to to, give, to depict an item uh, in the metal language. Um, I have introduced a few ones here. We know that tap water in most places in Yoruba language, we call it to me a rock. For me, if we say Omi Idilo, Idilo is what the Yabu people call uh, uh, tap water. Idilo, when they are going to the uh, public um, uh, tap, they will say, and let see Idilo. They are going to Idilo. So uh, I would probably subscribe to Omi Idilo, for example, uh, to depict tap water rather than Omi Ero. Ogbon is from Ife, and Itun is from Ijebu. The two words meaning quarters. Uh, these are words that uh, are not too hidden, that can be adopted uh, for some other uses in the language. And we have Atapu in Ijebu, uh, meaning stool, but it can be borrowed into the language, Yoruba carrier, uh, as we call it so that uh, uh, the scope of the meaning can be expanded. Then we have what we call spe special coinage. Special coinages are words that are not even in existence in whatever way in uh, uh, the language before, or uh, they are just special coinages, so to speak. Uh, the one used in the Yoruba metal language, for instance, is lenu, meaning superfluous. From the verb le, that is something that is excessive, and nu, to disappear or to get lost. So when you say lenu, it means that something that is superfluous, something that is excessive and of no use. So that is a special coinage by the scholars at that time. Uh, the other one here, I say doing, which was my own coinage at the time we were doing some projects and they, they were talking about jam. And uh, by the time we understood what uh, the process of making jam, uh, this is uh, something we produce by cooking. So um, we formed the term as a doing, and that was what we used in the book at that time, very many years ago. Our newborn new, this is the third word here. Um, is what uh, is recommended currently uh, in Yoruba metal language. But I think Awonubonu will probably be shorter and we still uh, uh, depict the same uh, idea. So what I'm saying here is just to show that special coinages can come up so that we can broaden the language uh, in different forms. Then we have the fifth uh, group, loan or borrowed words. I am saying that it is highly recommended that this should be the last resort. If the borrowed terms are already well known, conveys an idea or a concept that may not be adequately captured with the indigenous language, or readily conformed with a pattern that is otherwise well known in many other languages, then it may be adopted. What we are saying here is that um, if we have some other words from the language itself, go ahead. If uh, it's getting difficult to capture the concept, except we borrow the language, 
then we may consider uh, borrowing the language. And of course, uh, in Nigeria here, Yoruba land, because of our political and the colonial experience, what readily comes to mind is uh, uh, English language. But I tell you most sincerely, uh, that is not the only language we can borrow from. We can borrow from some other languages, um, uh, Igbo, Hausa, Arabic, and so on, even French. For they say, I was made to understand, for instance, is from Fenet in uh, French. Uh, so we can look for different places, different ways to borrow or learn words. Um, now, we have examples of uh, loan words here. Uh, some of them are very well known, so there is no need to begin to talk too much about them. Uh, they are already in, the, uh, uh, in, in good use within the populace. Photo, phono, uh, batani for pattern, phonemo, phonology, cinema. Uh, the one that uh, caught my attention that I so recently is she shall just see This is just which is she she adjust adjustment from the English word adjustment. She she adjust see that is amplitude uh, modulation. That is what we have um, in the meta language, the language currently. If I have my way, I would probably. Uh, still make some efforts to look for better words. But that is what we have now. Then we have decimal for decimal. Foca, those, those are my own examples. Foca, uh, when you talk about Foca, you are talking about a volcanizer. And when you talk about Fabul, you are talking about a Fabul or something that is uh, uh, not true. Uh, in English, uh, sorry, in um, Pidgin, we have Sabi. And uh, I have had uh, uh, people we consider to be literate that are not lettered in uh, Western um, education. Say, over Sabi, long power, over Sabi. That is, this one, something is wrong with this person. He is behaving like somebody who over understands. So, and that is from English. If we introduce that to Yoruba, it will still convey some meaning to uh, people using the language. Then, uh, po, when you go to the volcanizer, for instance, me po, come and pump it for me. I guess that is from the uh, word pump. Po, right. Then, so those are the different ways by which uh, uh, we can look through the language and see how we can begin to coin new uh, uh, words for good use. Uh, however, I want to make a few suggestions. The first is that for ease of compilation and reference, it is advised that similar neologism be grouped together. That is, um, similar terms for particular purposes uh, be put together for medical purposes, academic purposes, politics, law, sciences, history, religious studies, and so on, or for religions generally. So interaction with specialists in, in the different fields is very paramount, as well as adequate research effort to get the actual meaning of terms and representation. Um, if we must do something that is going to uh, stand the test of the day, then we must involve the users and the those uh, who have better understanding on, about the concepts as we are making our collision so that we don't wrongly term uh, words. Then there will be need to collaborate with professional associations involved in Yoruba studies. Uh, these include the Accommodate at Yasha Yoruba, the College NC. We have that association, Yoruba Studies Association, uh, the ones who put together the uh, meta language we currently use, uh, Nigeria Educational Research Council, broadcasters and broadcasting corporations, publishers. We are quite the urban so we are crucial partners in progress as far as I 
we would want to believe. Then the use of Yoruba orthography should be adopted as much as possible for the loan rates, including the resolution of consonant finals and clusters, depending on the mode of learning, uh, of learning whether Afujuya uh, or Afitia, that is I loan or I uh, loan, uh, right? Then uh, it should be noted that Yoruba language is a tonal language and it should be respected as such. This is where specialists in the language must show their level of competence. Uh, technologists working on the glossary, artificial intelligence and such others should also have the, this in mind for the final production to be deemed successful. I told you the import of low tone, high tone, mid tone in uh, vowels. If they are not respected, you will say something different. They are very crucial. This should be borne in mind as many teachers of Yoruba language, especially at basic education level, tend to gloss over this very important aspect of the language when writing it down. Then ambiguities and vagueness should be resolved to avoid misrepresentation so that we, I mean, we resolve such uh, uh, issues before uh, collecting final collation. And then more than one interpretation may be made for the same terminology. The terminology should, however, not be far from the understanding of the user. Um, the example I'm giving here is uh, depression and three different uh, uh, words were given in the meta language. Uh, although the last one there, Idagu, uh, I'm not very familiar with that word, and Ikududu, but Irewes is a very common one. But if you have such words, there's nothing saying we cannot throw them up so that um, at least we have uh, synonyms in other languages too. At the same, I mean, for the particular uh, notion, we have two, three words uh, still saying about the same thing. Well, um, my dear, very, uh, my very dear listeners, uh, I think this is where I want to stop uh, for now. If you have questions, please go ahead. Uh, I thank uh, the organizers of this uh, uh, neologism get together, so to speak. Thank you very much. Um, I pray that the good Lord will continue to steer us in the right path and direction. Thank you for listening. Okay, before any comments, let me just um, ask for some clarification. So you said um, Idilo is used for tap water, uh, for tap in the Could yeah. you could you tell me the etymology? Why Idilo? What's informed that um that term? So I was saying that uh, the little I have inquired about that word suggests that Idilo is something that pumps water out. So Idilo is going to where you have the machine or the equipment that pumps water out. Okay. That's so by extension, uh, Omi Dilo is water from that machine, from the tap. That is what I was suggesting there. Okay. Um, about the Idagu there, yeah. Yes, I got to know that that is um a coinage from dull weather. You know, when you're okay. someone depressed, you know, it's like the person is in dull mood. So that word was actually gotten from the state of the weather. So dull weather. You know, it was borrowed. Okay. Yeah, so yes, that's it. Well, uh, well, that's part of what we are talking about. Um, uh, borrowing from uh, some known or not even so that we can put them to better use. Uh, all we need is, I mean, give them some exposure with time, uh, people will get to know about them and adopt. Thank you very much for that intervention. Dr. Lusomi, please speak. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, once again, the listeners. 
And uh, thank you, the presenter or the lecturer, for that wonderful and uh, very explicit uh, analysis of uh, Yoruba morphology, especially the morphological processes. is very uh, detailed and uh, interesting. Uh, without necessarily repeating what the lecturer has uh, said, I just want to uh, make uh, some observation, and these are my own personal observations, that looking at um, the coinages, that is neologism now, because uh, I'm just trying to be very careful when we say neologism and new words. Sometimes one will be tempted to say new words without knowing that the word, the word we refer to as a neologism have not really been fully absorbed into the lexicon of uh, a particular language. So I think it's better to say the coinages. So like I said, the, my own observation is that uh, most of these uh, coined uh, words are derived using uh, affixation. That is a affixation process and the uh, uh, compounding, especially because uh, you know probably this could be because of the morphological typology of the Yoruba language, which is largely agglutinating, agglutinating in the sense that uh, the uh, uh, morpheme, different roots, different free morphemes can be combined. And when they are combined together, they give us an idea of what we want to say or what we have in mind. And uh, in the same way, these individual morphemes that are attached together can still be separated in such a manner that uh, each of them will still maintain its distinct meaning. So because of this agglutinative uh, nature of the language, it's very easy to coin new terms for uh, probably as a result of uh, to suppress the necessities of a uh, uh, language or to fill a gap in language uh, or probably in, uh, in communication. You know, like uh, you told us yesterday that uh, when we talk about coinage, coinage, <clears throat> excuse me, coinage, it starts being a, a neologism when its, uh, uh, its use has been widely accepted just like uh, some words that we have been using, it's probably some words that are now in, that have been mainstream, so to speak, in uh, into the Yoruba lexicon. Some of them were initially neologism, but they stopped being neologism, immediately they metamorphosed from that particular status into a Yoruba lexicon, that is into Yoruba word, you know? So, uh, uh, with this uh, uh, new, new way that we are talking about, if we can continue to strive to explore all these morphological processes that uh, Doc mentioned now, I think we may not even go into borrowing because uh, if we're going to borrowing, before we know, we find borrowing somehow easier, probably because uh, we learn it by hearing it or by seeing it, so we 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 may quickly feel at home or comfortable using that rather than uh uh dig down rather than uh, to, to thinking deeply to see whether we can form our own which will have Yoruba origin which will conform to the synchronic uh, uh, nature of the language you know just like. Uh, uh, some terms that I, I discovered, especially some mathematical terms, when we talk about whole number, say number or DD, when we talk about fraction, there's tendency to say fraction, we can write it as fraction or something like that. But beyond that, we can say it does you way way, because, you know, all along, even if you go to uh, uh, recently, the federal government, I think last year, brought up an idea, trying to resuscitate a long 14 idea, which is already enshrined in the NP, the National Policy on, uh, uh, of Education on Language, to adopt the use of a mother tongue in teaching primary school pupils 
all the subjects, even up to mathematics, in their in the language of their immediate environment. So if we, we we start rushing back into borrowing, we may not be able to show that our own language too has the capacity and full potential to coin words that can describe all these morphology. I mean, all these uh, mathematical concepts. Take for instance, we say fraction. It means it. We can say it does see where where. And if you look at it, it does see where where. Just like Doctor Doc mentioned. E, there is a prefix. Da is to, to partition or something like that. Then C, then where 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 means to break something into pieces. That is the small, small pieces of it. So when we now combine all this, given the agglutinative nature of the language, we form, we coin a word for that particular mathematical concept. It does where where. So if you only have something like a weight, weight, W E, I G H T. The extent you say weighty. After all, if you say weighty, everyone will understand it. But beyond that, if you say I will wo, I be I won, I will I I will wo, that be we will wo or something like that. It's a concept. It's a mathematical concept. Uh, if we have like a, a dimensional shape, we have a ya olopo, uh, a ya olopo. That is, uh, if you have uh, something like a uh, 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 rectangle. How can we de distinguish between a rectangle and uh, uh, a square? For square, we can say a yaolo pomeri to dogba, a yaolo pomeri dogba and dogba, and a yaolo pomeri tiko dogba for rectangle. Although one thing I've observed in all these coinages, which is equally peculiar to our most of indigenous languages, is that we try to form. If you look at the length of the coinage compared to one term. Look at what I said now. I just said scale, look at scale. But look at what we use to capture scale in the language. Say, eh, 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 yeah, Olopo, Mary, Dogba, and Dogba. We, what, what we find it somehow funny, what we find it somehow, but that is our home. And we should try, we should strive to, uh, to embrace it, to accommodate it, to like it that way. Even though it is beyond one word, but that is the nature of our language. We can't compare it to English language. English language is largely, uh, will I say, isolating. Isolating, but in Yoruba is agglutinating. Although lang no, there's no particular language that is entirely one particular morphological typology. But in our own, it's agglutinating. Chinese is isolated. Chinese is, uh, uh, is equally isolating. You know, if you go to uh, Swahili, if you go to, uh, uh, what's it, uh, Turkish, all these two are agglutinating, like uh, Yoruba. Or like if you go to Greek, if you go to Latin, which are fusional, you know, or like if you go, so this is our own. We should strive to embrace it. Eh? Like if you say something like, uh, like computer terminologies now, like inbox, how do we say, I sent something into your, it or see your inbox, I sent a mail into your inbox. Uh, for me, I see it as something like uh, say ate. I mean aka, ate jise to wole aka. Uh, where we say aka, it means like a band where we store something. Like ate jise, it may not be perfect. It's just an attempt because even if you look at uh, 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 neologism that we are we are talking about, it's of it's the use of neologism. It often begins with a small community of people, like a small people. And before you know, it's this small community that will now serve as a vehicle of uh, transmission, of spreading it. It's just like a throwing a stone into a pond. It will generate ripples, and the ripples will now generate into waves. And before you know it, it will spread across. And now will it spread across? Doc mentioned it now. He, he, he suggested something that if we can incorporate the journalists, the broadcasters into a bear. Or like a Yoruba Studies Association and different uh, uh, associations of Yoruba language. These are the people that will be now using these concepts, these terms or coinages in their uh, 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 broadcast, probably news broadcast and the rest of that. And before you know it, listeners, wider listeners, will now start using it. And from there, it will it will it will take off. So I think I want to uh, uh, suggest that, that because if we look at majority of, uh, like, look at it, like when you say perimeter, 
we can say you want a yika polygon be or 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 lock polygon polygon here means uh, angle you know uh, because uh, the it although these ones are coinages they are not new words they are not lexemes there is a difference between neologism that is a coinage and lexeme when you say lexeme is a word that actually follows the morphological rules uh, uh, that's let me say grammar grammar which comprises the phonological morphological syntactic and semantic rules of a particular language and the moment that word is formed it found itself it is uh, 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 absorbed into the yoruba lexicon that's a new word just like when we say uh order or uh, order comprising or that is a, the prefix and the so that is to hunt, it becomes hunter. Definitely, that one is already taken as a word. But if you now look at uh, some other word like new normal, now we said that uh, we, we have sense new normal. New normal is not a concept, whether we like it or not. But how do we capture new normal? Can we say alabono dewu? When we say alabono dewu, we say something like new, something that is abnormal, but is which is now a new normal. How do we capture it? Suppose we want to write some, say, I mean, we, we come across a term like a, a new normal. How do we capture it? Do we say new normal, normal total? What is it? We can say a laboro. It somehow it 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 sounds somehow strange. But excuse me, that is that is our language. That is what it's able to offer. The essence of I mean, language is for communication. Once it is conventionally taken, conventionally. Uh, 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 embrace that when we when we hear a laboro there it means new normal then it becomes part of our lexicon at least then it, and once it is said in Egboma Onima de Yoruba that is the apex Yoruba uh, uh, teachers association or uh, uh, speakers uh, association then it beco it becomes it how do we distinguish between internet and network without say internet or network can we see which one is Aye Lujara? Which one is Itakun? Alatagba. You can see Itakun. Doctor mentioned it. Itakun. That is prefixation. Then Alatagba. A la that uh, uh, tagba and things like that. It's a, it's, it's a combination of different morphological processes in 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 in, in, uh, 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 in, uh, in a bid to coin a word. But even at that, it is a concept. If we have something like a COVID-19, how do we capture COVID-19? We say, Aru, Bomu, Benu, Abafefe, Tanka. At least, Bomu, Benu is what? Because one thing I know is that when you are coining a word, part of the coinage will take care or we take cognizance of the features or the characteristics of what we are trying to, uh, to describe. And uh, from there, I think uh, we can coin many words because whether we like it or not, thousands upon thousands of new words are being uh, uh, are finding themselves into uh, into every language, and there is that necessity upon the speakers of languages to find terms. Even if it means coining it a word on the spot of moment, for at least to fill that communicative gap. So, but after filling that communicative gap, do we allow such words to go? It shouldn't, because it is, with that part of what we are doing here is equally to enlarge the scope, the 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 linguistic database of the language of Yoruba language, and it's an aspect of a linguistic or language documentation. Because, uh, in fact, I, of recent, I'm just uh, thinking that when we say that English has survived three different stages, uh, 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 old English, uh, sorry, uh, yes, uh, old English, middle English, and modern English, just like German. We have old high German, middle high German, and modern German. Does it mean that uh, we, we, there were no Yoruba people during that time? of uh, old high German or old English during that uh, Shakespearean uh, period. There were, during the, the uh, what is it, uh, the, that particular time, there were Europe. It's only that because of uh, 
lift, a low, uh, low level of literacy, or is it low level of literacy, or lack of education? That is a former Western education. That was why most of these words were not written. Our forefathers, they, were having, they, they had ways of describing all this. But because of poor documentation or lack of documentation, that we've lost majority of uh, 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 a bulk of uh, pocket, pocket of those words. But now that new technological concepts, mathematical concepts, and what I view are now coming as a result of advancements. Yes, I think we should begin to coin because for how long do we borrow? I support the the uh, doc that uh, we shouldn't, that borrowing should be the last option. It should rather be the last option. Yes, even though, like I said earlier, that no language is self-sufficient, but even at that, it doesn't mean that uh, because of uh, insufficiency or because of the uh, dependence of one language upon the other, we should now be running to other languages. No, even though this neologism we are talking about, English borrowed it from, uh, from uh, Greek, where it means uh, 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 neos and the uh, logos, meaning new words. But we have what it takes in the Yoruba language to form our own. Yes. And if we, for, once we form it and we uh, 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 accommodate the, our, the other people that can help us spread it across, like uh, waves on the pond within the Yoruba speech community, larger speech community, like broadcaster, like I said, before you know it, it becomes what people will be saying. Thank you, sir. Rather than say we borrow here and we borrow there. And for me, I don't uh, really like that. So I want to align my own uh, position with a uh, doc in that uh, uh, aspect. So yeah. that's uh, the much I have to add to that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, also, I'm, not, yeah. I'm also a um, patron of not um, borrowing terms. Good. Like, yeah, I prefer us to create our own and and um try our own intellectual capacity to yes come new way. thank you very much for yes your contribution uh um, you're so, welcome so, someone asked the question what is aglu agglutinative yeah. someone just asked that uh, question. well like i said i uh yes agglutinating we can say agglutinating or agglutinative is we know we have there are different languages of the world but morphologically these languages are based on the nature, the structure of morphemes in each of the languages of the world, you know? So linguists now uh, uh, break or rather classify different languages of the world into three or four. We have uh, uh, isolating language or languages. We have isolating languages. That is a language that have just to make up of one one morpheme, one one morpheme, like a, a Chinese language, like Vietnamese. Vietnamese is largely isolating. Although, like I said earlier, in my uh, when I was making my own uh, submission, that there is no language that is entirely one type. Vietnamese and Chinese, these the two languages are largely isolating. That is, it's one 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 morpheme word, ching chan chun ching chan chun ching, or something like that. That each word means one morpheme, one morpheme. That is one. Then we equally have fusioner, fusioner or synthetic. Fusioner in a way that the uh, two morphemes joined together, but once they join together, they can hardly separate, you know, two different morphemes. Say, for instance, we have, let, let me start an example in English. We have you, which is a second person, be it singular or plural. But and we equally have your, which is the possessive form of you. You know, so the form, what makes uh, 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 you your you cannot you can't you can't you can't break it. You understand? I don't know whether you are you are with me. You cannot break what makes uh, your from you. So, but your and you only look at yours, just like uh, those. Of, I don't know whether there is anybody in the house that speaks uh, or they speaks uh, much uh, much French. If you look at, we have amas, amos, and something like that. So if you look at it, like French is largely uh, uh, fusioner. Greek is largely fusioner. So if Latin is largely fusioner. Just like we equally have some pockets of such words in English. You know, okay, look at the deep and depth. Look at long and length. 
what makes a uh, long length. You cannot differentiate between the two the same way you can differentiate between teach and teacher. You can see if you break teach, I mean, if you break teacher, you have teach and er. That is the prefix. That is uh, the 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 uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the doer of an action. So that is er. But you cannot break what makes a uh, 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 length. I mean, what makes long length? Meaning that long or length from long is an example of a, a functional language, which is largely seen in Latin or Greek. So if you now come to Yoruba, the third pipe now is a agglutinating or affixing. We have agglutinating or affixing in a way that different free morphemes are combined to form a word. And in the same way they are combined, they can equally be broken, they can equally be split. And each morphine will still maintain its distinct uh, uh, meaning. And we have that more even in our in the names we bear. When we say Oluwa Shegun, Oluwa She Ogun, when we say uh, Onye de Kachi, on, uh, Onye de Kachi. So that is who knows tomorrow? Onye de Kachi. You can join the two together, I mean, all this together to form a word that is the name of a person. And you can still break it, you know, to form a sentence that is that, that. So these are three or probably more of some of the morphological typologies of the languages that we have. Thank you. Thank you very much for that yeah, uh, contribution. Yeah. Well, um, permit me to uh, say that or request that this presentation uh, be a combined presentation at the end of the day, because uh, Dr. Lusomi actually presented the part B of uh, uh, the, my presentation with the examples he gave and uh, the opinions he raised. I want to thank him uh, for that. Well, um, the entire process is not a day's uh, affair. We are starting somewhere. And by the end of the day, we will make our mark. And uh, if we cannot, it's, I mean, the job cannot be finished by one person or uh, at, a point, at, a, at a time. It continues. So I want to appreciate him for his contributions. Um, like he said, there are so many ways by which uh, these things can be done. Uh, but largely, at the end of the day, the collection of different ideas will come and begin to sieve uh, the various ideas and the suggestions from left, right, and center. Uh, I was very abused with uh, various suggestions he made in terms of uh, colleges, uh, particularly the one about square. Only uh, Gumeri Adogba will probably be short enough. And so we do with other words. And uh, who thought about COVID happening when it did? But it happened. And that is how uh, we should be able to cope with developments all over the world. There was a time, I think it was 1969, when the first set of people got to the moon. And uh, they said the men landed on the moon. I don't speak French and I'm not too familiar with French, but the French expert said, oh, if it were to be French, they, it's like they anticipated that that will happen, it will happen. And they won't talk about land when uh, referring to the moon. They will have a kind of coinage that will say, the men mounded, something like that, that uh, there is the capacity within the language to express that. I want to believe that your language has the capacity. Uh, let us involve specialists in the areas where we will need to have a large number of terminologies, particularly in the sciences, so that we don't misrepresent uh, what they have in mind. Again, I want to thank uh, you. Uh, the group that has put this together 
and all people who are here present and all those who will make further contributions on the matter. Thank you very much.